just set up my hide on the edge of the lake, waiting for dawn, though from what I can see the horizon looks pretty sucked in by clouds, so I doubt we'll get much of a sunrise. But there's still the chance of some decent light, and um, hopefully some water birds will come close. Flamingos, ducks of all varieties, and waders. So we'll see if we can get some decent shots of those. The thing with the lake is that during the winter, they, um, they draw the water out of the lake through the dam and empty it because they're worried of flooding So uh, during the winter. So they let the water drain out quite a lot. And this year in particular, they let the water drain out a lot further than normal so that they can do some repairs uh, on the dam itself. Unfortunately that means that in a lot of places along here, along the embankment where we'd normally have access down to the water, um, the water is so far away that we can't get decent access because the, the beach that's left is so muddy that you just sink up to your knees in it, in, in the uh, swamp. And that being the case, I've had to sort of come to a place that I wouldn't normally come to, where I can get access down and be relatively close to the water. So hopefully that's going to give us a decent chance at an image at any rate. So all I can do is wait and see and hope that something turns up. At the moment there's nothing in front of me, though a flock of flamingos did just fly past. Um, so it's about another hour before sunrise and so I'll just sit as quiet as I can in the hide and wait it out, see what happens. In the meantime, I guess I'll make a cup of coffee. See you in a little while. Starbucks mug cup. Oh, lovely. by their slightly <clears throat> more drab plumage and hopefully that'll give confidence to more flamingos that will see them as they fly over that it's safe and they can land also so fingers crossed some more birds will arrive soon that they'll make their way down this way as well so I can get a better shot of them come closer but at the moment they're quite far away we'll see what the morning brings and there's another flock flying in there
those ones that just flew past now they're joining the main bunch which is probably half a mile down the beach so once they land and they hopefully they'll wander down this way as well as they search in the mud for food if I'm lucky One, the other wonderful thing that I love about locations here in Greece and especially Lake Kerkini is that even though it's quite a popular birding spot and it has become in the last few years even more popular for, for photographers too, uh, wildlife photographers but despite that popularity you can still be totally, totally alone here within nature and just soaking it in it's beautiful There's a little flock of pied wagtails that just came up. They're so cute. And there's one sitting there just on a rock in the water, just looking beautiful. You can really see the pink of the flight petals as they fly. For individuals, the windows starting to drift across in front of my position here. So I'm starting to get some better images. The sun briefly broke through a tiny gap in the clouds, and then there's a shaft of light coming through, so it's quite beautiful. But it never really made a proper appearance. So we still have this very soft milky light which is absolutely gorgeous it's very soft I'll give you a quick look at the scene I'll probably just make out some flamingos on the horizon here just by that spit. Being very, very noisy. Seeing as long as this thing can focus on it. Let's have a look.
flight path like this. of the flamingos in front of me, he's just waving. One of the things I wanted to explain is what this channel is going to be about. And it's mainly going to be about landscape and wildlife photography. Adventurous wildlife and landscape photography. Here in Greece and throughout the Balkans, hopefully, in the coming year. This is a, a part of the world that I absolutely adore. Greece especially, I mean, people have the impression of Greece as being beautiful islands, beaches, sun, sand, sea, uh, bars, drinking and all that kind of thing. And what they don't realize is just how rich this country is in amazing landscape, amazing wild places that are largely unknown by anyone out of Greece. To give you an example, Greece has about 60 peaks that are over 2,000 meters, uh, which means it's proper alpine zone, and it's stunning, stunning mountains, stunning lakes like this one, Lake Kirkini, um, just amazing, amazing places, and amazing wildlife, and bird life. This lake in particular uh, was a man-made lake but since it was created in the 30s to basically rid the area of malaria because this was all swampland um, it has become a haven for wildlife, birds in particular uh, and it is a staging post between the north in the Arctic, Scandinavia, um, on their migrations. So in the winter, the Scandinavian Arctic birds, ducks, geese, uh, etc., they, they fly down here to overwinter on this lake. And at Lake Kirkini in particular, we have the majority of the uh, Palearctic population of lesser white-fronted geese. Um, of which I think there's only about 140 left um, and at, I think at last count there was 103 here um, on the lake. They're very difficult to see and to photograph of course because they're well hidden well within the delta of the lake um, and they also hide themselves amongst the flocks of the white-fronted geese so they're quite difficult to spot but nevertheless they're here which gives an indication of just how important this wetland is. The other thing with this wetland is the accessibility. There aren't... You obviously have to respect the environment, respect the location, respect the place, respect the animals that live here. But by and large, you are unhindered in your access to the lake. There are no-go zones, for example, in the, in the delta itself, where there is um, a particular type of forest which actually survives in the water. So that's really a no-go zone. Um, but other than that, all around the edges of the lake are accessible and uh, largely unexploited. So you're not going to find ready hides here like you do in the... Uh, um, national parks in other countries 
so you really have to bring your own hide if that's what you want to do um, but it's you can drive around the lake you can access different points different beaches different piers um, and get really really stunning images the lake is probably best known for its population of Dalmatian pelicans which are uh, classed as endangered and they have been breeding here successfully for quite a number of years now um, I think they built in 2015 they built new platforms stone platforms for them to nest on and those have been hugely successful and if I'm not mistaken they had 285 chicks this year which is a stunning stunning success um, and in January I actually bring workshops here photography workshops to photograph specifically the Dalmatian pelicans in December I bring a workshop I have a workshop here which is specifically for the flamingos at dawn and we also try and photograph wildcat uh, of which there are many around the lake but we also have other wildlife here jackals otters unfortunately we also have koi poo but they're quite fun to photograph um, being an introduced invasive species so they shouldn't really be here and they do do some damage um, what else do we have and all the bird life so as I was saying in in the winter the Scandinavian Arctic flocks arrive uh, from the north to overwinter here and then in the springtime they leave and we get all the African migrants arriving so we have bee eater roller um, different birds of prey arrive um, a stunning variety hoopoe uh, lots and lots and lots of birds um, so we really are very very lucky here so part of what I'm trying to do with this uh, channel is to show you the diversity uh, of life that there is here in Greece um, and to show you some of the locations that you might not have thought of before uh, to visit which are a lot easier to access than some of the better known wildlife photography uh, locations and landscape locations for that matter um, we have stunning stunning places which I hope you will follow me on here subscribe to this channel and over the coming months and year uh, hopefully years um, I look forward to having the opportunity to show you my Greece the Greece that I love thank you for watching I'm gonna pack up now I think and try not to disturb the birds as I leave and um, I hope to see you again very soon thank you for watching bye for now